Maria Pena. I'm the project assistant here at CIRMUSE. It's been 16 years. I started at CIRMUSE in 1999 after I finished my master's and um, I never left. I worked in the office for a bit and held on there doing some administrative stuff. And then after that, Patrick McConney entered CIRMUSE and he needed someone to, do, to help him with socioeconomic monitoring. It was a new global initiative, and he asked if I would help, and I thought at that point, I was like, oh, no way. Um, socioeconomic monitoring is not for me. This is a person who had a double major in biology, and I was looking forward to spending the rest of my life in a lab doing genetic work. I'd worked on the white sea urchin, the sea egg, that is very common here in Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean, and thought I was going to be happy and living in a lab. And the rest is really just history. Now I work with people. I'm on the other side now. So what's your average work day like? Ugh, typical working day. That can change. I make no plans anymore because my plans always change. I normally have a to-do list. So I start by trying to knock some things off of my to-do list. But as I said, I mean, it can change. I come in. It's not as exciting as Renata's job because she's out in the field and she's swimming and diving. I'm set at a desk for most of my time um, and I'm working on reports. I am editing um, CIRMES technical reports. I also do the CIRMES Connections newsletter. Um, I write proposals for projects. Uh, I'm normally running behind people if we are doing any sort of project work. I'm normally chasing them to find out how well they're doing. Um, so it varies from day to day. Um, I think a, a large part of my job is also training people in a methodology that we use here and that we promote. It's called SOCMON. So I do a lot of that. Um, so it, as I, you know, it can vary from, from day to day. So. Who are you outside of CIRMES? What do you do in your free time? What free time? <laughs> um, I like the gym. So I go to the gym. I try to get to the gym at least twice a week. I know as I get older, I need to go more. So I'm going to try to add an extra class in there. So maybe like three times a week. But I love the gym. I love doing the classes at the gym. And I love the social aspect of actually going to the gym and meeting people there. Um, I love reading, so there's nothing more that I like than to go home after work with a really good book, a novel, and it's normally fiction, and read for hours, if that's possible, if I do have the time. Um, other than that, it's a very, it's a very quiet life, um, but, but I enjoy it. I like, I like spending Maria time doing what I want. So I think having cats is the best thing for me because I'm not sure how I could work children into the entire equation. One of my passions, I love dancing. I don't know if a lot of people know that about me, but I do. Um, as my brother said, I can dance circles around anyone and I normally don't need to be invited to dance. I'll just get up once the music starts and I love it. I'll just get up and I will just dance and enjoy myself. So I love that. I've done Argentine tango, and I have also done salsa. So I love, I love the Latin, and it's probably because of my heritage as well. Um, but Calypso is right up there, and you don't need to ask me twice. <laughs> so I love Life at Sermes is interesting, but what is your most memorable Sermes experience? I don't think... I could pick one moment. I think it's really a collection of moments and experiences here that I've had at CIRMES. I mean, it varies from when our former director, Professor Robin Mahan, grabbed me and I and told us, we're going down to the East Coast to find sea grape trees to plant and landscape our garden here at CIRMES, to when Patrick came in to CIRMES and wanted me to do socioeconomic monitoring and completely threw me off my course to, I think, um, last year hosting the Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute here in Barbados, which was a large regional and international conference. But And in between there, there are just 
so many other experiences and memories that I have. There is just not one, but rather a collection. Now, we know that Sermes is a wonderful team, but who is it that sticks out most in your memory? Oh, that's, that's super easy. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who my favorite person is. That's trouble. <laughs> no, I don't think... I don't think I can pinpoint a favorite. Um, I think we have such a diverse group of people here with so many different backgrounds and skills. It's really hard to define a favorite. I mean, I think amongst all of us, we all have our friends and our, our little groups that maybe, you know, we hang out with uh, at lunch or we will go out with afterwards after work for a drink on Fridays. but. Within that, there are just so many people with different skills, um, always willing to help in situations when you need them. So, you know, it's to me, Sermes is a, is a collection of people who make up a fantastic team. And I think we're very unique in that way because I'm not sure that there is another department um, either here on campus or externally that functions that way. It's not something that I have heard many people comment on. Renata is my office mate. Um, we've been together for years now. We live in the same office here at Surmi's. Um, she's a wonderful friend. Um, we, we, do, we spend so much time together. Um, it's like being with a sister, um, because I consider her a sister. Um, we share so much. We've had happy times and we've had, you know, we've shared in some sad times as well, some personal sad times, so, yeah, but she's my buddy. Neetha. Neetha has been, um, I knew Neetha before I came to Surmi's, um, and this goes back to when we were doing A-levels. I met her at our A-level maths teacher. Um, we didn't know each other that well, but it wasn't until then she came to Surmi's. I had finished and I was working on my master's thesis and she was doing the program. Um, and it was afterwards that we developed um, this very long-lasting friendship. Um, Neetha is one who is a very wise woman. Um, to me, she's just older than beyond her age. Uh, I've often called her a sage because the advice that she dispenses is, is just remarkable. And I think that shows in the way she handles the students and she interacts with the students. Students are very comfortable to go to her to talk about any and everything. Um, Neetha is also the sunshine, I think, in this department. I mean, you can hear her from the moment she enters the building, you know that she's around. Um, and she's always, it doesn't matter what she's doing, but she always has a joke or she can always make me laugh. Um, so that is, that is Nita in a nutshell. Um, there's so much more to this woman, but that, yeah, that's, that's just her. She can always make me smile no matter what. Tea time happens regularly here at Surmi's, and specifically in Renata's office and my office. We're in room 13, so Neetha will normally come in, but she sneaks into Robin's office to get the distilled water to put in the kettle. I have to buy the tea for Neetha because she never manages to buy the tea herself, so I stock the tea, and she will normally come in, and that normally means at that point in time that no work gets done because it's a very chatty period. Um, but for us, I think it's needed, because we do need a break during the day. So a 15-minute, what we hope would be a 15-minute conversation, sometimes lasts a little longer. But we make up for it, because we work here quite late. <laughs> now, let's say you had unlimited funding to do with what you wish. What would you do for the environment? I really think that I would target politicians and policymakers raising their awareness about the environment, making sure that the environment makes it onto their agendas 
as a priority. I often feel that the environment is left behind um, because we focus so much on tourism, um, especially in a small island developing state. But I think we really need to raise awareness of politicians that you know the environment must be in their top five priorities that must be addressed and paid attention to. I personally also would like to show them that monitoring both ecological and socioeconomic is so critical to decision making and to legislation um, and that it should be used and depended on when making these decisions to inform their decisions. So that's where my money would go definitely. I would go at the higher level and um, try to try to create that kind of awareness. Now, same scenario, but what would you do just for you? Hmm. What would I do for Maria? I would genetically engineer my future husband. Let me tell you what he's going to be like. He's going to be part Chris Hemsworth, because we love Thor. <laughs> he's going to be part dark Johnny Depp, because that's sexy. I'm going to throw in that cute Asian prince from Marco Polo. I don't know if you've ever seen that flick series, Marco Polo. I'm going to throw him as well as that cute Asian guy from Hawaii Five O, We ne mustn't forget Blair Underwood and Denzel Washington. So my future husband is going to be an amazing mix of these men. Got to decide on the accents. Either going to be Italian or Spanish. So we're going to work on that. Yeah. Okay, seriously. <laughs> what I would do for Maria. My dream. Um is to buy a plantation house. I would love to buy an old plantation house in Barbados, fix it up, and make it into a bed and breakfast that I can run. It really, that's all I want to do. What's one thing about you that we would probably never guess by just looking? So I think one thing people may not know about me is that um, I've been in quite a few choirs in my time. I love singing. Um, and I've always sung soprano. So it started at school at St. Winifred's Friends uh, with Lady Branker, who molded me. And then it continued at the Barbados Community College. And um, I've had the choir conductor at my church actually come to me on a number of occasions asking me to sing uh, with the choir. But because of time, I can't dedicate myself to it at this point. I don't have a song chosen. I need to do my voice exercises first. This mm -hmm. this doesn't, you know, me, 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 me. <laughs> because there is YouTube. You can find this is for you. No, that's okay. That's cool. As I told you, this here. has, it has to wake up first. You know, I have to do my exercises. <laughs> we don't perform on a whim. Yeah. <laughs> I also love accents. I love to do accents. I think Jerome knows that. Like, I, I love English accents. Don't you think so? I think it's absolutely lovely. I would love to be an English lady. I would. Mm. Why? Why? Right. Why? I would. And have tea and crumpets every evening. For sure. For, For sure. sure. I would absolutely love that, darling. I would. Yes. <laughs> You're going to love the accent. No, I love English. I'll stick to my English. Thank you very much. Well, wouldn't you like to live in Downton Abbey and dress for dinner? Come down for dinner and dress for dinner. And have everyone just put your dinner there for you. I think that would be absolutely marvellous. I think, um, I think if anything, to get into this field and to stay into this field, you really have to love it. Um, and you have to have the concern of the environment at your heart because it's not always easy. Um, I work a lot, as I said before, I work a lot with people and changing behaviors, um, changing policy is so difficult and it can be so frustrating when you see that you've been working on something for 10 years and it has taken so long to make a change and people haven't got it yet, you know, they don't understand how important it is. Um, for example, with Sokman, we've done Sokman now for a decade or more, and people just don't seem to realize that that information is so critical to managing resources, but it's collected, 
and it seems to just stay on a shelf. So um, I would say, you know, but we, we always, because we love it, we keep working on it and we feel that in the future we're going to make a difference. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. You can drop us an email and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.